Before you start today's inquiry lab, I want to give you a couple quick pointers on what you need to be focusing in on for this FET simulation. So we're going to go back into light refraction now that we have finished up reflection with plane mirrors and curved mirrors. We talked about refraction already as one big property that all waves do with slinkies and water. Remember with refraction, when that wave enters into a new medium, it's going to do a couple different things. It's going to change its direction and it's going to change its velocity. So we are going to take a look at what happens when light is traveling through one medium and enters into a second medium and start to put together some um, trends and tendencies, which is ultimately going to then segue over into the Snell's Law video wrap up that you will do. So you're going to go into uh, fetcolorado.edu. We've been there before for a couple other simulations. And you're going to go into the program Bending Light, or you could Google Fet Bending Light, and this should pop up. So we're going to enter into it. You're going to click on Intro. Um, you can also uh, click on Prism. So if you ever had a prism when you were a little kid, the little glass object and the light would shine on it and then break it up into the Roy G. Viv spectrum, um, you can play around with that. There's also some more tools, but we're really going to focus in our time on the intro. And then you're going to have a laser. You're going to turn that on. And there is going to be two options. Um, the ray and the wave, we're going to use both of those. We're going to use the wave option in your analysis, so be mindful. It's in the upper left-hand corner over here. But we're going to start on ray. So this area over here is going to tell you what the first material is that the light is traveling through and then the material that the light enters into. Um, so again, refraction is our big property of when waves enter into a new medium. So this first medium that the light is going to be traveling through is going to be air. Um, so make sure that that sets to air. We're also going to start to talk about index of refraction values. So air has an index of refraction value of one. It's the ratio compared to the speed of light through air. And we already established that at three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So we're bringing back a lot of these concepts that we uh, covered when we did the slinky waves and the um, water waves with refraction. The second medium that the air is going to enter into or the light is going to enter into is down here. So you can change that as well. For us in our investigation, we're going to be concentrating on mystery A and mystery B. Um, but again, you can kind of play around with these where um, it can stay in air. So it didn't change its medium. So we won't see it bending or changing directions at all. Uh, we won't see it changing its velocity because it maintains the same medium throughout. Um, you also can uh, set it to water. Um, and again, you start to see that bend already. So that's an option that we can uh, take a look at too. Uh, when you flip it on waves, you can start to see how that velocity is also changing as it's traveling through air and then um, ends up in the second medium. So again, just some things to play around with. Uh, here's our uh, gas, here's our liquid glass, that'll be our solid. So you can see that that refracted light wave, so again, it's that refracted light wave that's going to enter into the new medium. This light coming out of the laser and going through air, we're going to call that our incident light wave, just like we talked about incident and refracted with slinkies and with our water waves. We're going to use that same terminology. So what I'm going to take you through is just... Um, how we're going to use this using mystery substance A. So again, the light and have it on ray when you're taking your uh, data. Um, the light is going to um, travel through air. There's the incident. And another property that we talked about with water waves is some of that light is going to split at that medium change and reflect back. So this right here is going to be your reflected light wave. Here is your incident light wave that's traveling through the air. This, when it enters into the new medium, that's your refracted light wave. Okay, so some terminology here. So you're going to want to pull the protractor. So just click, drag, and pull. 
This dash line right here, there's your normal line. Again, we've already established that terminology. That normal line is perpendicular to that surface change. So we're gonna read these angles in relationship to that normal line. And what you're gonna do and what we're gonna practice with with mystery A, and this is on your data sheet, is you guys are going to set the angle of incident uh, for mystery substance B. And we'll get to that in a second on your own. Uh, but again, I'm in the blue columns here with medium A, just so you guys can kind of get a handle on what you guys are gonna do for your unknown B. So you're gonna set that angle of incidence. We're gonna go 0, 10, 20, 30, all the way down through um, to 70. So you're gonna set that in relationship with the normal line and you're gonna move, just click, hold and drag on your laser and you're gonna move that to the set angle. So the first one's kind of boring at zero degrees Here's your refracted light ray. Again, that angle in which it enters into the new medium, um, it's going to be zero. So the first data points that you're going to put in are always going to be zero, zero. But then the next one you're going to do is 10 degrees. And these go up by five. So here's five degrees. Just click and drag it. There's 10 degrees. So once you set that on 10 degrees, you are gonna to wanna to read what that refracted angle is down here, okay, between the normal line and where that light ray is. So again, this is your five degree mark right here. These go up in increments of five. Um, it's a little bit below five. I'm gonna call that, you're probably gonna to have to interpret some of these numbers a little bit. Um, I'm gonna say that that's three, okay? That's a three degree angle. Now to review reflection, we still get that incident angle is equal to that reflected angle. That incident angle we set at 10, if you take a look on the other side, it reflects back out at 10. Um, so that's gonna hold true when that light is reflecting back into that same medium. We're gonna take a look at a property that's pretty cool with reflection uh, later on in this unit. So again, I'm gonna look down here for my angle. So this one is three. So you can see that I went ahead and put in three already. Now you're gonna calculate out these next two columns, which are gonna be these two columns right here for mystery B. So you wanna take the sign of those angles. So this first column is gonna be the sign of your refracted angle. So here's your refraction angles. What we just figured out is three. So sign of three, I'm gonna record down 0 0.05. And then I also want your sign of your incident angle, what you set the laser at. So we set that at 10. So sine of 10 is going to be 0.17. Um, and then I just went ahead and filled in the rest of that data. So you could kind of use that as a pattern um, to go back and then um, run the same with mystery B. So for you guys, what you're going to do is you're going to set, this is still going to be air. You're going to flip it over to mystery B. Okay. And then once you do that, you're going to set those same angles, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, et cetera, and then record down what those refracted angles are. Once you do that, then you're going to calculate out, make sure it's in degree mode, okay, when you are calculating out the sign of your refracted angle and the sign of your incident angle. Um, so again, this is angle R, this column right here, this is angle I, this farther out column right here. Once you do that, uh, we went ahead and graphed on graphical analysis the uh, data for medium A. So I put my sine of my angle I data on my Y axis and the sine of my angle R data on my uh, X axis. And then um, just like we've always done, um, you hit that correlation button, it gives you the slope and the Y intercept. So you're gonna use this graph to put that into your mathematical expression into Y equals MX plus B. Uh, remember, this is what's on your Y axis. Here's your slope. This is what's on your X axis. There's your value for your Y intercept. So you're gonna record that in there. Uh, then you're gonna answer a couple analysis questions. Now, be careful for number one. 
I'm asking you to calculate out the slope for your mystery B, what you took the data for, because the slope is going to tell you what those index of refraction values are. So whatever mystery B is, when you calculate out that slope, you're going to get that index of refraction. Now remember to calculate out slope, you need to take two data points and do your change in Y over change in X. So again, on your Y axis, you're going to take um, your sine of your angle I, the change in two of those data points over the sine of your angle R. Okay, your angle R is gonna go in your denominator, your angle I is gonna go in your numerator. And then answer the rest of those questions. Uh, once you have answered those questions, then you're gonna go ahead and submit this back through Google Classroom. Good luck, have fun with this one.